In the studio with us today is Leon Chagrin, a Holocaust survivor who is here to speak about his experiences and his hopes for the 21st century. Leon, I want to thank you for being with us today. Briefly tell the audience a little bit about your life. I know when the war started, you were in your native town of Poland in Grebov. And tell us a little bit about what happened and your special relationship with uh, horses that is really the emphasis of part of how you were saved during the Shoah. My life in, uh, as a teenager started when the Second World War uh, broke out. Uh, I was 12 years old. I was living in a town which was quite cultural, advanced in Polish and also in Yiddish. We had uh, the Jewish culture was run by the Orthodox uh, rabbis Halberstams, which were a dynasty of, of, of tzaddikim from the past. And also, we had a, a secular part of the Jewish people, which started before I was born. And uh, I, I did the, the, the town by itself didn't have too many, the, the percentage of Jews was about 10%. Uh, there was other minorities, there were gypsies, there were Ukrainians, there were ortho Greek Orthodox, you know, boyars uh, from the times of Ivan the Terrible who settled down in the underbelly of the Carpathian, and also uh, some of them in our villages around. Uh, life, my life was completely different from those who went to yeshivas, because I never went to yeshiva. Yeah, I understand uh, from the book, uh, The Horse Adjutant, which you've written, that uh, your family actually was uh, one of the more secular families in town. The, my father was uh, uh, secular. The, my uncle, they were all also secular. The only one who belonged still to the traditional, you know, orthodox uh, Jew, Jewry was my grandfather. And Leon, what happened when the Nazis came into Poland? What uh, happened in your town at the beginning? The, the war, the rumors of war, were spread quite fast. As the Nazis are advancing in September 1st when the war broke out, they didn't arrive to our hometown before seven days. It took them seven days. The, the, the troops who came in were Tyrolean troops uh, on horses, on mules, with uh, carriages and motorcycles. Uh, there was no uh, special uh, heavy uh, armor, uh, armored divisions, only everything was foot soldiers. My understanding, when they came in, they created a ghetto. The first thing what they did, they took the stable in change for, for, for as I mean, they, they took the synagogue, the, the secular, I don't know if you can call it a secular, the conservative synagogue, and they made it as a stable for the horses. And they put in the horses. And the, the, the second act was, they took over the few stores which were there in, the, in town. And slowly they started to implement the laws, the Nazi laws. The denazification did not finish. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was stopped when Germany became independent. But the, the killers were hiding in different countries. And a lot of governments supported them and hide them. So 
the, the roots of evil spread. And now in the 21st century, you can see a, a hate which comes out against the Jewish people, especially against Israel, any place where you are. If you're not involved in the Jewish community, you don't hear this, you don't see this. But if once you go out from the Jewish community, you can hear all kind, uh, all kind spreading the guilt against the Jews. I have to finish one thing which I will never forget, and I hope you will not forget. About two years ago, on television, on Channel 2, they had an interview of a General SS from the Einsatz Commandos. His name was Lifshitz, General Lifshitz. He is maybe not alive because he was in Germany, interviewed by the German uh, reporters. And I was watching with my wife when a man leaves in a mansion in Germany and they ask him the question about the genocide. You were a leader of an ISIS commando in the east of, of, of Poland. You were killing thousands of people, children. And do you have any mercy of it? They ask him, or, or what do you do? He officially repeats, if I have to do it again, I'm going to do it again. On television. So as a Holocaust survivor, seeing this type of a person, of, of evil living, he spreads the same thing what he was doing you know, 40 or 50 years ago. Yes. How, I think the governments, the international courts, if they will not stop it before what they advocate uh, killings. If they don't stop it and bring it to justice before, it will be later too late. Leon, I want to thank you for being with us today. Yeah. To our viewers, I would ask you to stay right where you are. We're going to be back after our commercial break to learn more about the book that was written about Leon's life.